Hold your weest. Be quiet. Enough of what you're saying. Enough of your shit. Oh, Hold your weest. <laughs> Hold your weest. Exactly, yes. Hold your weest. Welcome to a special bonus episode of Above Deck. Today we are talking to Kyle Stilley, our favorite Scottish deckhand from Below Deck Season 11. We loved his accent, his kilt, his bromance with Ben, lack of modesty, and his sweet romance with Barbie. Can't wait to catch up with him and have him on the pod. Please enjoy this interview with Kyle Stilley. Oh, hello. <gasps> hey, hello? Kyle. Hello there. Hi. How are you guys? How are good. you? Good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm a little bit um dusty. I'm just come off a, a week's trip up in Vancouver, so I'm feeling a bit worse for wear, but you know, we're still okay. here. Two arms, two legs. It's good. That's good. And so you're in Montana? I'm back in Montana now, yeah. I'm pull up in uh, Missoula. Missoula. Are you I'm there for the summer? Therefore, I've been here since March, and I'm here until I actually go back to Scotland on the 18th of this month of July. Oh, okay. okay. What have you been doing besides hanging out with family? Just hang. Well, I'm just hanging up with fam. I've done a few trips. I've got some family up in um, Whitefish as well. So just kind of been touring around, hiking, doing a lot of drinking. So you know, <laughs> not heavy drinking, but you know, and enjoy, just enjoying enjoying the summer. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've had a few a few other trips elsewhere, but. Yeah, just kind of enjoying, enjoying the, the Montana summer. They have the best summer. It's a short yeah. summer, but I love how cool it gets at night. It feels so good. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I guess it's probably not unlike Scotland in the summer, right? Is yeah, it? I guess. Yeah, very or similar. Like yeah, islands. very similar climate, similar kind of seasonal seasonal change. So, yeah, it feels like home. Oh, I oh love that's awesome. That. So cool. Well, Kyle, we have never gotten a response to an interview like we have for yours there are so many questions i mean obviously we love you on below deck but the response was just tremendous like so many questions we're not going to get to even like a quarter of them all right i love it love it love it people love you on the show i'm gonna guess that what the answer is to this one but are you still working as a deckhand (laughs) um yeah i'm still working as a deckhand yeah i'm still going yeah still um Still trying to make my way in the industry. I was obviously relatively green um, stepping mm-hmm. on last year, but um, yeah, I've, I've had I've had a fair few experience um, experiences since since last year. Yes, so still very much um, enjoying the job. Awesome. For a gre- for a green deckhand, you did so well. I mean, we've seen many a green deckhand. I mean, I know you had experience. You'd worked on some boats before, smaller boats or in Australia and catamarans and stuff, um, but the deck team worked so well that season once mm-hmm. you know you got uh rid of you know who Jared was it yeah absolutely Jared, yeah. love you Jared but you know I think the deck team worked so well together and I thought you did great yeah we had a great team I got on I mean Ben and Sonny were I mean as much as they had their you know their plans and their relation which I mean it shows they're still together now but I know yeah we I think we all were the three of us especially I think we worked really well together yeah here's a question Definitely. from at Jack Doc 2 how did you get on below deck? So did you apply or were you kind of scouted on social media? It was kind of, so I did apply, but like I'd applied for something else using mm-hmm. a video for, for um, it was actually Squid Game, the challenge. I'd oh, I love that out. show. Yeah, because it was like, it was like a million pound prize. And I was like, because I'm not big on doing this and the whole video thing, right? So I'd yeah. like sent a video, like a cheeky video to that and also <laughs> used it. I'd also used it for an application for um for casting for the show. So, yeah, I mean, I did apply, but it was a very haphazard kind of application. And then, yeah, just kind of one thing led to another. And I was in, yeah, I was in Grenada. Oh, That's I love awesome. that. Oh, I, I, are they going to do another season of Squid Game Challenge? Because you should I'm, do that. I'm, I'm not sure. I had nothing, I had no t- as much as I would have liked to get on there and get that a million pound <laughs> prize, I am. Um, I heard nothing back from them. So, um, yeah, you'll oh, have man. to ask different different people for that one. Well, you would have oh. had to compete with an awful lot of people to for that prize. So, yeah, exactly. I yeah. don't know. Plus, it's kind of terrifying. Um, <laughs> okay, so let's see. So, most of the questions we got for you are some iteration of are you single will you go out with me (laughs) things like that um 
this one made me laugh at char underscore one, one, two, nine asks, are you single? And can we please be together either way? <laughs> I mean, yes, I'm still single, but uh, maybe, maybe take me, take me out for a drink first before we, before we make any commitments. Right. 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 Would you consider dating a fan, like someone that slipped into your DMS? I'm not going to lie. There's been a few over the past um, few months that I've been, um, I've been, let's just say I've been enjoying the the newfound fame. So yeah, we'll not, um, we'll not elaborate any further on that. <laughs> Well, you're lucky because you froze for a second, so we didn't really get to hear much. <laughs> oh, that was very lucky. Okay, yeah, I, I lucked out there. But I'm, I will say that I'm, I've definitely met some fans along the way. We'll say that. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Well, if all the questions we got for you are any indication of your DMs, what your inbox looks like, I can only imagine. Yeah. Yeah, there's some um, there's some questionable DMs there as well. I mean, some lovely DMs, don't get me wrong, but there's some um, very questionable messages that I've been getting through. Yeah. <laughs> so there was a scene that we didn't get to see last season where your crew went tubing in Grenada and something happened where you ended up without swim trunks on. Oh, Please tell us about brilliant. that. That was brilliant. So <laughs> yeah, our day off Kerry Cap was yeah, got us um set up river tubing. And it was a great day as well. It was a phenomenal day, just flowing down the river. The boys that did it, there's three boys that kind of followed us running through the river, you know, making sure you didn't get stuck, etc. Mm -hmm. And um, I knew something was going on because Benny, for about half an hour to an hour before, he was like, "Oh yeah, the, the last group of guests have left us these shorts. You want they want you to put them on and get a photo." And mm -hmm. Dylan, being Dylan the puppy dog, he's got them on straight away. But I'm kind of I'm looking at Benny and I'm like, "Nah, there's something going on here." Because the shorts themselves had the Loch Ness monster on the shorts, <laughs> like they had little messies on the shorts, right? So okay. I'm going, "There's something going on." But anyway, I was like, "Yeah, I'm in." So we're getting about halfway down the river and I jumped in, I'd been in swimming mm -hmm. and I get back in my rubber ring and I just look down and I'm just pulling away my shorts, like, you know, coming away at the seams. So yeah, Benny got me real good on that one. He got me real, real good on that. So um, yeah, hats off to Benny on that one. That's so but, yeah, funny. The I... I mean, I'd seen them before. I'd never seen them used before, but yeah, disintegrating swim shorts is definitely a thing. Yeah, That's we're going to have to Google that one. That's, that's a really good joke. <laughs> it was brilliant. Honestly, it was brilliant. He done well. He done well. So sad that they did not show that. Like, I'd much <laughs> rather have seen that than relationship drama or anything. <laughs> well, fighting. yeah. Ain't oh. the truth. <laughs> At BuddyBoy66 asks, when are you coming to Australia with Ben? I, could, I don't know when I'll be there with Ben, because I'm pretty sure he is, Um, him and Sonny have definitely got their own thing going on. But um, yeah. I was uh, the guy, the group of guys that I'm, I'm good friends with. That I was actually that I lived with in Whistler. That's why I was up in Vancouver. I'm actually linking up with them uh, in the start of August in Europe. Um, they're all like chippies and etc. Over in Sydney, so we can actually the the Brits can get um, a three year visa again for Australia. So it might actually um it's definitely on the cards potentially mm -hmm. the end of this year. Not guaranteed. Not saying anything, but it's definitely something that I'm looking at because I mean. When I was in Australia, I was 18 years old when I first went to Australia. And if I if I could do it again, I would do mm -hmm. it very differently. So um yeah, it's definitely on my my not too distant future getting back over that side okay, of the world. Well, all your Australian fans will be super happy. Um Absolutely. so obviously Ben and Sonny are like joined at the hip, but you guys are oh, still good friends, right? You and Yeah, um, I mean I I actually spoke to both of them on the phone the other day. Yeah, we're still yeah, we still speak. Ben and Ben and Sonny are um yeah, they seem happy. I mean, not I don't speak to them too, you know, it's like anything. You do a job, you go on and you know, life goes on. So I still keep in relative contact with them, but um yeah, you know, once a month, see how they're getting on. Yeah. Okay, so this one I didn't understand, but at Shixie asks, does he like haggis and urn brew? <laughs> iron brew iron, iron brew. brew okay love iron brew anywhere in the world that i go i try and find it it's really hard to find and for those of you that don't know what it is it's basically scotland's coca-cola it's the oh. biggest selling soft drink in scotland okay originally i think it was originally it's like a scottish merchant that made it in jamaica but it's become this huge it's a huge i mean it's a staple of scottish culture iron brew if you're scottish and you don't like it there's there's something wrong with you and um haggis i mean you might you might have heard of haggis yeah but, yeah. Um, yeah i love haggis as well i mean haggis needs in people scottish dish so yeah love them both love oh, it gosh all right this is a familiar <laughs> name at melinda springer asks who is your favorite charter guest 
it has to be Melinda Springer. I can't not answer that question, of course. And I mean, you guys were amazing. You were awesome. Um, so yeah, no, you guys were the best. Yeah, we liked their group. So at Laura underscore Borealis underscore writes, what is your favorite place in Scotland? And I'm taking notes because my parents are going to be there in September. So favorite place. I mean, I'm a sucker for Edinburgh, but I mean, I grew up not far from Edinburgh and I'm, I mean, I think we'd be in a traveler. Edinburgh is very kind of multicultural. There's a lot of different kind of groups of people there. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's just that it's a very typical touristy city, but it's got a lot of yeah. history in it. Um, and as mm -hmm. I say, there's a, there's, there's loads of different cultures there now. So it's, it's very open, very free. I mean, Glasgow, Glasgow's up there. You want to see Scotland, Scotland, Glasgow's more, you know, more kind of the Scottish people, if that makes sense. But then mm -hmm. as soon as you get up, past Inverness, up into the highlands. I mean, anywhere you go is beautiful. I mean, it, the country changes completely once you get up north past Inverness into the highlands. I mean, if you get the chance, if you're there, maybe mm -hmm. start start in Edinburgh, do a, you know, a couple of days, cruise through Glasgow and get a car and just get up north, up past Loch Ness, up through Inverness. And I mean, Inverness is the gateway to the highlands, right? And I mean, what, okay. as I say, once you're up there, it's a, it's a totally different country. And if you really fancy up in Murray, my mom's got a beautiful little B and B up in a place mm. called Cullen. It was actually voted um voted one of the nicest beaches in Scotland in the past year. So yeah, if you fancy that Stravaig B and B, it's a lovely little B and B, and my mom cooks a phenomenal breakfast where you would get haggis in your breakfast as well. Oh wow! You'll have to send us. Is there a website link for it? There's, it's at, there's, I think there's actually a link on my Instagram. Okay, all right. So we'll, I mean, I'll, we'll I can pop it, it up our... again, but um yeah, Stravaig. It's uh yeah, as I say, she's she runs a she runs a tiny ship. That's so cool. I want to meet awesome. your mom. <laughs> yeah, she's awesome. She's a good she's a good woman. So, Kyle, what do Scottish people think about the show Outlander? Well, I get asked this quite a lot, and I'm not gonna lie, I've never seen it. I've never okay. seen it. So I don't know. I mean, I guess people love it, but I hear it's more of a uh, a ladies eye catching series. It's not so much for the men, so it's it's not something I have too much of a of an opinion. It's super on. sexy, very. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I get it sounds like it's a good show, but yeah, I can't say that I've ever um, I've ever seen it to be honest. Okay, well, beautiful scenery too. Beautiful men and beautiful scenery. <laughs> so, okay. Um, have you always liked being naked and flashing your pen fifteen? Yes, I mean, if you, anybody knows Billy Connolly, I mean, one of the greatest comedians of all time, he's always been a firm, firm believer in getting naked and frolicking around. So, I mean, it, it's it's just, a, <laughs> I mean, I understand in the modern world that we're in, it's not the best thing to do because there's snowflakes everywhere you look, but there's nothing better than stripping your kit off and just, you know, having a dance around, you know? It's human nature, I guess. I mean, if you're not into it, look the other way. I, yeah, I love that about you. And I have to say the older I get, the more I could like care less. I kind of yeah. get how, you know, when you're 20 something and you're in the gym locker room and you see these old ladies walking around naked, you're like, oh my God, I can't believe they would do that. Now I'm like, I can totally see how that, I'd be totally fine with that. <laughs> I do yeah. not care anymore. <laughs> something quite liberating about that, I think. Something quite freeing about it, you know? Yeah. For within sure. reason, I understand, you know, I mean, I'm not strolling through cities. Right. You know, there's a time, there's a time and a place. But jumping in a river, a waterfall, like yeah. a pool. Sure. Yeah. On the last day of work, celebrating, you know? Uh, where, uh, at Jal Bright 310 asks, where are your rings from? You do have quite a, a lot of hand decorations. Yeah, I've got a fair few rings, actually. Um, some of yeah. them are just mindless. Um, this one particularly, this one I actually got, this is my grandfather's from Montana. He unfortunately died. Um, in mm. 82 unaware that he had any offspring but you know all the family have opened up the doors etc and yeah. Keila actually one of my one of my cousins she found it and I think I think it might have been cut off him when he was oh. old that's a real old ring from um from John so wow. um yeah I'm real I'm real proud of that one and then other ones I've just I mean this one I got in um, in Budapest I was at a music festival called Zaget Mm -hmm. It's on an island in the middle of um the Budapest River, the Zaget River in Budapest. Um, another Montana one. I got this one, and the one below it was in Whistler. Um, mm -hmm. this one here was bought bought in Edinburgh. It's my little Buddha. And then these two, these are kind of just throwaway on this hand. This is my throwaway hand, and this hand kind of means means something to me. If that makes sense. 
Sure. But I'm big on swapping them. Like, like my little cousin's back home in Scotland. Like I'm big on getting a ring and I'll get the M1 and then they all found one for me. Mm. So it's always been a, it's always just been a thing that kind of exchange. I mean, I've got a bag full of rings in my backpack that I travel with that, you know, I'm always looking to swap or, you know, if, if you get on with someday and it's just mm-hmm. a nice gesture, isn't it? Rings will always, yeah. it's always something you remember, you know? So yeah, just yeah. Like, I just love rings. Yeah, I love them. I love that. That's, That's awesome. Special. So this is uh, someone in your family, I believe. At Yupa Stilly asks. That's the who... mother. <laughs> it's your mom. <laughs> That's who mother, did you yeah. miss the most when you were at sea? Your mother, your father, or the Woogster? The Woogster, the dog, the German wire haired <laughs> pointer. The... God, I definitely missed the dog the most. He's, um, <laughs> yeah, he's a good pup. Like, he's a lovely dog. He's, um, We've always had little dogs. So growing up, we grew up down in a town called Selkirk, down in the borders. Mm-hmm. And um, we always had little border terriers, which lo- lovely dogs. We loved them. But it's like when you, you know, little dog syndrome, right? You're walking a little dog. Oh, yeah. They're yippy. They're always running up to other dogs. So you always had, like, you were always walking and had an anxiety about meeting other dog walkers. Whereas since having a big dog and just walking, you know, walking him off the lead, he's not running up to other dogs and fighting. He's just playful. So mm-hmm. as I say, not putting in anything against the terriers that we used to have, but yeah, I definitely miss, I, I miss Woody the most. Oh, that's so sweet. That's so sweet that your mom sent us a question. <laughs> so one she of my loves best... it. She loves Bravo. She's just insanely obsessed with Bravo. So of course she's really? sent in a bloody message. Yeah. Okay. That's so cute. So does she watch Housewives and stuff like that? Oh, she's, I mean, since day one, she's been a huge, she, I mean, anytime I go home, it's what's on the TV. Housewives are below the deck is what she's got. Yeah. She loves That's it. That's so cute. Well, she must've been very excited when you got on the show. I think she was very excited, but very apprehensive. So <laughs> I think after, I think all right now. Yeah. I think she's fine with it now, but I think she was maybe a little nervous because I mean, she knows exactly what I'm like. So. <laughs> <laughs> So Kyle, one of my best friends, Kate and friend of the pod, she lives in Missoula, has been there a long time, and she has some Mon- Montana specific questions for you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. She asks, have you hiked the M trail? I've hiked the M and I've hiked the L actually. Yes. M and the L. Yes. Okay. And have you tried a Rocky Mountain oyster? No, <laughs> I'm not. I'm, if it's oyster oysters, I'm not an oyster guy. I'm I think it's. Fan of oyster. I think it's balls of something. Oh, yeah. Like, Is I it... don't know. Do you know, Kelly? Is it like from I... a, a moose? Can we find out? Can I be yeah, that guy? Yeah, it's, put, a, check it's on a, the a Rocky Mountain oyster. It's definitely not a, a from the sea oyster. That's for sure. Oh, I don't know. I mean, if, if from the sea or from the land, I don't know if I'm a big fan of oysters at all. <laughs> they're <laughs> they're is... also known as uh, meatballs and prairie oysters in Canada. But they're bull testicles. Bull testicles. Bull All right, testicles. I'll, 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 I'll try a bull testicle. Well, actually, I'm on board. <laughs> I'll eat one, yeah. I mean, try everything <laughs> once, right? Yeah, why not? Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so we got this question a lot. You can probably guess what it is, but people want to know what happened with you and Barbie after the season. Um, I mean, we tried. I mean, yeah, we gave it a good run. She um she came to Scotland. I was in I was in um I went to Miami for a bit. It just you know, I mean, you especially watching it back, you can tell. I mean, I can tell first of all mm-hmm. what what was I thinking. Um, but as well, I mean, you know, you do a lot of things when um whether you're in love or whether it's in lust. I don't know, but yeah, I mean, we tr- we tried and it just it obviously didn't work out. Totally, come from totally different worlds, you know what I mean? So um. That's yeah, a bit of a, a bit of a pipe dream on both of our behalfs, but um, yeah, I wish her all the best in what she does, and yeah, it just wasn't wasn't the right fit. Yeah, yeah, you guys really couldn't have been any more different, but no. you're, which is why I think we both like we both liked that. There was something in the within mm-hmm. the season where it was like we both knew we were so different, but it just it kind of worked, you know. Mm-hmm. And then I think afterwards, I think we were, I mean, especially with the whole encompassing experience of you know going through mm-hmm. the job and filming etc mm-hmm. I think that kind of allowed the kind of feelings to kind of linger for both of us afterwards and maybe made it made it a bit you know in the real in the real world so to speak I don't think it would have maybe lasted as long but because of the the experience we went through I think we maybe both clung on to it a bit longer than than what we should have 
yeah, definitely a bonding experience to go through something like that. Well, it was very sweet how vulnerable you both were, were, and it was, it was very sweet, actually. It was, Mm -hmm. it made for for good TV and you could tell it was real. Yeah. Yeah. So at Lids J100 asks, would you do anything differently about the season? Um, would I do anything differently? I'd maybe tidy my room, yeah. That's <laughs> maybe what I'd do, yeah. I'd definitely tidy my room if I got asked to tidy my room, yeah. That was a, that was a definite um, fuck up on my behalf, which I wanted to, to be fair. And funnily enough, what they don't, what they didn't show you, because they showed Ben apologising to Kat, but for a while, me and Ben went back. But ben, to be honest, Ben didn't want to apologise, but I was adamant that I wanted to apologise. So I... Mm-hmm. I'd actually apologised to Cap, and I, I had a bottle of whiskey that I was going to give to him anyway, but I managed to wangle it and and make an apology and offer him a bottle of whiskey, which I think he really enjoyed because I mean, yeah, he, he, Cap likes to drink as much as as much as me, so yeah, I'll definitely that would that would be the change that I would do. I mean, I I understand the hierarchy and I understand that it's that's that's how a boat runs. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe Ben's chip on his shoulder and Mark kind of rubber arm kind of led us astray with that but that's that's definitely i would i would answer the, the call to hierarchy more yeah i think that's a good call yeah um so kyle could you teach us like a scottish phrase or word like something funny a that scottish you think phrase or word say. um pod your wished oh gosh hold your wished pod, pod your wished okay wished hot h well pod? i don't know how to spell it hot like hold <laughs> Hold, hold. Wished, which okay. would be like, shut up. Hold your wished. Be quiet. Enough of what you're saying. Enough of your shit. Oh, hold I'm your sorry. wished. Hold <laughs> your wished. Exactly. Yes. Hold your wished. Or, I love um, it. <laughs> or um, I write would sound would sound like you're confirming something, but huh. like if somebody was saying something and you kind of heard it as a, you would hear it and you're like, this guy's chatting absolute rubbish you would say i write i write i write yeah okay. i like it yeah. i like that hold your wish hold your wish is a good one or also what's the other one i was thinking of a uh, peely wally that's a good one peely wally <laughs> peely wally what's that mean if you're, if you're a bit um if you're a bit under the weather if you're feeling a bit a bit down and ill you'd be a bit peely wally your skin would be peely wally <laughs> i love that peely wally peely wally, peely wally. wally. okay Okay, so you're just not looking well. Okay. Not well, yeah. Okay. Well, I know everybody is hoping that we'll get to see you on another season, including us. Would you do another season? I would I would do another one in a heartbeat, yes. If they invited me back, I would um I would yeah. definitely be there. Yeah, I would answer the call. So yeah. That would be awesome. I yeah. love it. Well, tell everybody um where they can find you on Instagram and let us know if there's anything else you want to promote. You have anything coming up? Yeah, I mean, I've not much coming up. I'm kind of cruising around. I'm just in Missoula, Montana. Um, you know, just having fun, enjoying the summer. Um, yeah, if you want to find me on Instagram, it's that Scottish guy. Um, other than that, you know, my mum's B&B. If anybody's traveling up north, um, definitely get yourselves up there. Other than that, if you just, you know, if you fancy a beer, I'll be I'll be moving around. I'll be here in Missoula. Um, I'm back to Scotland on the 18th. Um, and then I'm planning to be, I'll be with um, Nick actually in Palma in mm. August potentially. So I'll be around there. But yeah, other than that, I'm just cruising, enjoying life, kind of enjoying, enjoying things. I got, I got a good few things coming up that, um, you know, you might be able to work out what's happening, but yeah, I can't say nothing too, too silly on that at the moment. Right. But yeah, there's a, there's a good, there's a good few things coming up. You guys will be excited to see what I've got coming up. So um, yeah, keep an eye out for, for things upcoming. Well, if you're staying with Nick and Palma, make sure you bring earplugs because of the snoring. I've heard he snores, yeah. I've heard, I've heard about that, yeah. So uh, don't worry. I've got my travel earplugs with me, so I'll be well and prepared to get over there with him. Oh, that's awesome. Well, Kyle, this has been so fun for us. Thanks for reaching out and making yourself available. We hope you have a great rest of your summer. Awesome. Yeah, thanks very much. Thanks for taking the time, guys. It's been a pleasure speaking with you guys. An absolute pleasure. Thanks so much, Kyle safe travels. That's it for this bonus episode of Above Deck. As always, thank you to everyone at Herd at Media and a very special thank you to Kyle Stilley for joining us. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts and tell a friend. Don't forget to rate and review us. Five stars only. 
Please follow us on Instagram at Above Deck Pod, and you can leave an email or a voice memo at Above Deck Pod at gmail.com. And you can also watch our videos on our videos, our episodes, our videos, <laughs> our video episodes on the Herd at <laughs> Media YouTube channel. Until next time, I'm Kelly Busby. And I'm Sarah Goldman. We'll see you next week.